<laughs> Hi there. Hello there. How you doing? Good, thanks. Good. How are you? Right, who else was there? Everybody else is in. Okay, so what we wanted to uh, try and touch upon tonight is a bit of... Uh, oh, hello. Hi, Paul. Hey, hello, John. How are you doing? You right? Good. You'd have to forgive me. I might look at a strange angle. It's only because we've got the table set up as well. Because uh, uh, Ross is oh, here and Peter is going to be kind of duplicating what I'm doing on the screen. So I might be looking across a little bit at the um, chart at the same time. So we thought we'd go through a bit of a, a say, flight uh, performance and planning process of of creating a uh, a route that we uh, that we do sometimes do. I did say on the um, video it's going to be Lake District, but that is quite a big one, and we probably won't have time. We'll just run out tonight, so we'll. we'll tone that down slightly and make it um, a place in Wales, a place called Lake Verney, <laughs> or Vimwy, Verney, Vermin, as James likes to call it. Vernon, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's do that. Right. So if I, I think I've got it already open. Yeah, that's fine. Let me share my screen with you, first of all, and get it rolling. I'll tell you, just, be, just before I do that, just before I do that, What's um what's uh what is flight performance and planning? I mean I can answer it if you want to I know, I know, I was sort of thinking. <laughs> Somebody's going to be brave enough. Go on, somebody be brave enough. That's a silence. Oh, no. Right, come on in. Oh, Ross, do you yeah. want to come on? You're normally quite good at sticking your neck out and just having a go. It is the process by which you assess the viability of a flight. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, that's that's good. That's definitely one part of it, isn't it? So what's involved in it then? Well, one of the elements would certainly be your C and G of, of the age of the aircraft. Yes. You need to do your calcs and make sure. Yeah, your weight and balance. Yeah. Yep, good. So that's definitely but part of that process. And there's a, a there's a fairly easy way of actually working this out because, of course, there's another exam, isn't there? Navigation. Mm. And flight forms and planning and navigation do go hand in hand. But the way I'd normally make, get people to think of it is flight forms and planning is stuff before you go flying. Yeah. And navigation is when you are flying. And that re works reasonably well. That, that helps to find the, the divide between the two subjects. Otherwise, it sort of blends into one blends into the other. So this is all about really preparation to go flying, isn't it? Yeah. So would that involve, therefore, checking the helicopter over? Mm. Yes. Uh, because you're on the ground yeah. before you take. That's kind of, this is it. It's a bit yeah. of a grey area. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not grey area, a slightly blurred line. But checking the helicopter would surely be more like aircraft general knowledge and operational procedures, operational procedures maybe, yes. So, you, yeah, you see that it doesn't necessarily include everything about going flying, does it? Flight performance and planning. Um, would it involve making sure you're fit to fly? So that's human performance and limitations. That's yeah. definitely human performance limitations, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So as far as exams and topics are concerned, you can see that flight forms and planning is 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 definitely about prepping to go flying, but doesn't necessarily include everything that we would normally include, because when we finally teach you to, to to do all this sort of stuff, we're including a whole load of other things. You know, when we sort of seems like jokingly ask you, are you fed and watered? That's a bit of important limitations, but we need to make sure that's all part of that process before we go flying. So we're going to really concentrate more on that, that planning of the flight, which will involve, if we get time for it, weight and balance, fuel, which then sort of melds into a bit of weight and balance as well. Can we yeah. take enough fuel? Do we need to stop and refuel? It'll also involve a little bit of weather, maybe. That, that crops up potentially, doesn't it, of course, yeah. about looking at the weather, but we don't want to focus entirely on the weather. We would just make sure we touched upon that, how that might influence the, the timing of the flight, those sorts of things. And of course, therefore, definitely about the headwind or tailwind, i.e. the upper wind of when we're flying. 
but let's see how far we get because you know it's not easy to try and get through all this in in that space of time all right any questions so far nope no nope. all right okay right on that basis then let me um let me share my screen now then so what comes first do we do we look at the map and decide where we're going or do we think do we know where we want to go and then look at the map is it a combination do we look at the weather first look at the weather and <laughs> <laughs> yeah so quite often in the uk is right if we you think right we are going to be going flying tomorrow i don't know where yet we'll just look at the weather and see where the nice weather is that definitely influences you doesn't it sometimes yeah yeah right yeah we had a recent uh, fly out that was meant to be going down to Padstow and yep, we just went in the complete opposite direction because that's where the better weather was. Anyway, let's just pretend that tomorrow uh, we're going to go to Wales then. So tomorrow morning. Uh, and uh, we're going to go there and have lunch. Maybe just have a, a mini look around, not exactly try and walk around Wales, but just a little mini walk around and fly back again. So is there, we're going to kind of dip in and out of, we talk about maybe the exam elements, but then we'll talk about the real life side of it. Straight away, does, does that sound like that we can do that in a day? Well, why wasn't back with lunch yeah. and a walk around? Well, we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of flying in one day for sure. I suppose it depends what helicopter you're in. So if you're in a 22. Could be, couldn't it? Yeah. But. The 22 actually when we go places isn't isn't that much slower no true but i think in even if the 44s are trying to go yeah. flat out the 22 you think about it over um if, if there's a, a, a even a 20 knot difference if we're flying for one hour the extra distance traveled by the 44 is not as much as you think when you calculate it. and then when you work it out the time you realize oh it's only minutes yeah so the faster aircraft only get there normally minutes beforehand it's very different when you're talking about long distances. Of course, it is. You know, when they're going across the Atlantic. I was thinking more fuel and weight and balance things Good. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah gonna... that's right. So it might be that the um the the uh, one of the helicopters might have to stop for fuel on the way or the way back, isn't it? Because it just can't take it to begin with. So straight away, you can hear our minds are whirring before we've even touched the chart, thinking that Wales is a reasonable distance, and we haven't even talked about the route we're taking yet. If we are we straight lining it? Are we taking a scenic route? Are we uh, trying to fly as fast as we can? Or are we going more the fuel, uh, the the range speed of the helicopter to maximize on the fuel? Quite a few things to consider, isn't there? But yeah, one of the things that was ticks in my mind would be, actually, that's quite a lot to achieve in a day. Quite a bit, isn't it? So we're going to need to get a bit of a wriggle on, certainly in the morning, without delaying. Otherwise, it's going to be a rush, all right? What time can we get started? What what about at the end of the day? What time can we come back? So we've got some parameters or some times to work within, haven't we? And then we can factor in a bit of a buffer at the end of the day to make sure we're definitely getting back rather than a mad scramble for sunset and those sorts of things before we've even then thought about the weather as well. Is that all making sense so far? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody online okay with that? Oh, it's, where we, like the buffers. it's where we find the the fro everybody's frozen. That's the suit which we're reminding on time. To Sounds start. good to me. Hey, there we go. There's somebody there. Everybody else is eating their tea, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anyone. Who can we see? No, no one's no, got they're all, camera they're, they're all hiding. Look. Very sure. Yeah, they've all been very this coy. Is, this is not acceptable. Stella, you had your camera on earlier. I might have to switch my camera off. There we go. Hey. It's a good moment, so I'm not a pretty sight at the best of times, but. Not don't, true. don't worry, Jonathan, you're about this big on my screen, so you look fabulous. You're okay. What <laughs> <laughs> is the best? Best looking postage stamp ever. Okay. So there's many different ways of doing this. Ross, how would you? Um, we're going to go kind of. Okay. No, this is a half mil chart as well. Yeah. But don't, but don't panic. No, it no, means there's no difference. Twice as much info on there. That's it. So, of course, we're going to start off L Street. So you better find L Street. Right. It's uh, red I'm going to and find Lake, Lake Vermin for you. Vermin. So Genuinely, I why I called it on London information is that bad. <clears throat> so, I'll start off right there. So, what Ross is doing, as you can see, he's a trying to find Elstree. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> okay, it's actually not then, that hard. To then, what's even funnier is he's trying to you. he's trying to find where right. we're going to. So now, we're look for the big blue. Okay, yeah. 
What's but that's there? not in Wales. Where it might be caught in Wales. Nah, it's just it's right on the border, isn't it? It's Wrexham. Look area. at look at sort of this area. Is it labelled on that? It is. It is. No, no, is it really? Yeah. Vermin, vermin. Oh, I don't know. Rapping, it's it's not, not. It doesn't look like that long in latitude. Then. Oh, that's <laughs> actually yes, Peter. Yes, Peter that's very good. Yeah. Okay. Latin long. I will give you a Latin long. For Spell V Y. We had to get Google to pronounce. No, it is it V R W Y or something? For yes, reason, yeah. for a win. V W R W R something like that. Anyway, I've got it on my laptop, which is quite handy. Fifty two seven north. I've got to try and find it though. I'm gonna do it the opposite way around. Fifty two seven north roughly. V Y R N W Y. And it's about zero zero three five degrees. Where? So I'm going to do, I'll do it this way around for a change. Create route from Elstree, landing at 52. Roughly. I have just eyeballed that. There it is. Right, that's my planning done. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you spell it? Yeah. Okay, maybe I found the wrong, wrong leg again. <laughs> It matches the right shape, it but it's spelled completely. Don't, 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 don't point him out. Don't point him out. Look, where's Welsh ball? There's Welsh ball. Yeah, I think it's spelled differently. I have found it. Can you see it? it? Yeah, I can see it. But I want Ross to find it. Oh, come on. We're all night. All right. right. It's right. I, I can see it. It's this one, isn't it? Oh, what? But they spelled it completely differently. <laughs> if and we... if in... No, I never would have seen that. Well, I never would have just... seen it. There is it because well, this well, matches well, the yeah, shape yeah. of it yeah it's in that yeah. Yeah, but look this one yeah. matches the yeah shape. it yeah. is that's interesting so mm. and it's right just there that yeah. is where we're going right on that end right you're gonna end it okay <clears throat> now ross ross as far as i'm concerned has already made a fatal error he's used a red pen <laughs> <laughs> Red would not show up at night. I would reserve that. Well, yeah, they say that. But I would, <laughs> I would re, we're not planning on flying yeah. that. I'd reserve that for things I want to watch out for. Yeah, for danger. So I'd. Just... And of course, if you obscure the information, they would tend to use a black pen and circle where it is you actually want to go. Um, a know. bit of. A bit of. It doesn't like my blue pen either, Ross. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> I used to do this on my roots of blue, and then I realized it was the hardest to rub off the chart. And oh, God, so if you grab a bit of kitty now, probably not one with pizza on it. No. <laughs> there we go. So how many plugs it take to, um, to do draw a line? Two to hold the chart, minutes, one to I draw it. <laughs> <laughs> Very glad you're here, Peter. So I'd circle where we're going without obscuring any information. Right, yeah. There we go. Cool. And with a bit of luck, it matches kind of what we've got on the end of the screen at the moment as well. You just think the spelling's different on guiding them. Yeah, strange, isn't it? They've called it right. They started it with an E. Oh, it's because it's in Welsh, isn't it? That's yes, right. I should think that's mm. right. Is it not already in Welsh? Mm, I don't know. No, because if you think of Cardiff, it's different in Welsh, isn't mm. it? Yeah, it's like C A R D Y V D or something. Okay. Right, this has got a line. We don't have a line yet. Oh, that's a start. We've got some stuff circled. <laughs> oh, yeah, you haven't got a line. We haven't yet. got a line. Are we drawing now, the line directly? What do we want to do? This is the thing. See, on the chart, if you draw the line directly, there's a hefty chance you're going to rub it out in a minute, isn't there? Mm. And there's multiple ways of doing this, this next bit, but. You would uh, potentially look at the weather tomorrow and see which wind direction is, because that will determine how you're going to get out of the hill street. But for now, to be honest, you don't need to necessarily draw the, you know, out by Alpha, out by Bravo. But what would be good is to find somewhere not too far away that you want to start from. So no which way you go out of hill street, we know we're heading off northwest, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. So somewhere that's quite close to hill street, you can easily find. And that's where we'll start the navigation. That's a little bit tricky as I see so on this one. Yeah, because of course we have we have two obvious selling points at L Street. Have they the M25 M1 junction? There you go. There. It's a bit more That's tricky the to see one. on mm. this chart. Let's just pretend we have got then, um, uh, a westerly wind tomorrow. So we'll go out of our alpha. That will make sense, doesn't Fantastic. it? Fantastic. Happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So there we are. 
we've got an actual start point so we can potentially draw a line in a minute got but no not idea. yet now of course therefore just i would normally just perhaps whiz up the other end again and have a look at landing at the place we're going to and for now we'll just say we're going to uh, just going to make an approach probably down the lake something along those lines but to be honest we can fab we can fathom what's that once we fly there so on a, on this occasion we wouldn't necessarily need to navigate to a point nearby and then go to find uh the actual hotel or the helipad itself we could draw a line directly there there'd be no reason because when we get there then we're going to just circle around and do our thing of site recce etc etc all that sort of jazz so i'd be happy to, to draw a line today so should we draw a straight line yet well, you could. <laughs> well, start, is there any obstacle on the way yeah so that's one of the things we potentially would then look at and um, space and then, yeah, yeah any obstacles in the yeah. airspace is things you want to avoid so suddenly we've got to look at no tans as well haven't we potentially before we just simply stick the line on the yeah. chart but there's a bit of kind of once again it's, it's what do you do first do you draw the line and then start to look and then modify the line or do you have a look first and then think about modifying the line we haven't even touched upon do you actually want to fly somewhere on the way and look at something mm. you know choice of route that would influence it yeah they often do i do sometimes think it's a little bit of a shame if you just straight line it to places mm. and not actually go via some of the pretty things that you can see on the way because they barely add any time I think as well, if you straight line it, you're, you're missing out on, you know, because I would then fly to, I suppose that's then, you know, are you navigating versus track crawling yeah. and things like that. Mm, that's right. Um, so there's many different reasons why or how you would go and draw the line from M1M25 to, to Lake Verney itself. You could have a corridor and see everything you want to see on the way. Yeah. And whilst we, um, you know, we do teach, obviously, this is it. You, you play with the paper chart, first of all, but a little combo because it is handy on something like Sky Demon because it's very easy to pull the route around and play around with it. Um, it'll, it'll, if we would not double check, but it will flag up potential no tams as well anyway. So it's it's a nice way of very quickly, easy pulling routes around and fathom out what you want. Now, I just need to, you guys are all covering something at the moment. Let's just move you across. With Sky, one of the things I would do, of course, is actually put which helicopter we're going. I'll tell you, we'll leave it as Echo Hotel. And <clears throat> I would potentially change that to something a little bit more sensible, maybe 85 knots. And I would put, I mean, we could do just simply tomorrow, but what about a, a more sp a specific time? So we'll put the 26th um, being tomorrow. And what time are we going to depart, guys? We can be optimistic and say 9.30. <laughs> Blimey, that's that is very optimistic. But in Sky Demon, it's currently in Zulu. Ah, so we've got to put eight thirty. So another thing to little watch out for. <clears throat> and so one of the things I like about flight performance and planning, all those sorts of things, is there's a lot of uh, there's a fair bit of maths involved, isn't there? Yeah. Maths is good because maths is just black and white. It's pretty straight, isn't it? As long as you've got the right numbers or information to work with in the first place. So accuracy. Hmm? Saying £109 a day. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ignore some of the things yeah, you might see. The, 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 the flight cost, for instance. Yeah, well, there's no good. way. Yeah. <laughs> you could forget that before <laughs> you'll get your cards out. Well, you have guests off the back of the truck. Yes, yeah, so we do want to be very accurate with things, don't we? As much as possible so we don't carry errors into the cockpit when the time comes, because there's going to be enough in, when we're up in the air anyway with inaccuracies of flying and the winds change and all those sorts of things. So there's something to set up straight away. So I've put, I'll just triple check. I did put tomorrow and we can hopefully um, get off the ground at say 9.30, so 8.30 Zulu. Cool. And for now that hopefully will have flagged up any, um, any no tams. We can see straight away that um, there's an airfield that we're going to have to potentially fly close by. Okay, doesn't look the end of the world. So let me just sort of run back do. down. <clears throat> Because this will then help Ross out as to whether we can actually draw, he can draw his line. So heading off out of here, um, it does kind of take over the top of Hemel Hempstead, which is all right if you can get the height, but we don't know if we can get the height slash altitude until tomorrow. So there's already a consideration of going around, mm. isn't there? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. We'll just try and log that in the memory banks. And hey, there's a little blue corner here. What's that, Ross? 
it's um control area so yeah that. so class yes lovely 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 people at luton but mm -hmm. straight away you've got workload haven't you yeah it's not that difficult but it does mean you're out of here you're trying to do free day you're trying to climb settle yourself down look at the weather get onto luton request a zone transit it's that's just a very small and very tiny little yeah, corner yeah. <laughs> it's doable so again we'll we'll come back to that it is doable but it is already up in your workload mm, trying to hold yeah as well. so close to halton so we're already kind of thinking about whether we want to tailor the beginning of this journey if I just whiz up for a minute, there's a couple of little notams about um, that one is, yes, oh, it's, it's model flying. Then we've got, uh, what's this? Yeah, the Crofton aerials. They really don't want you flying uh, down lower than 2,900. Now, the airspace around there is quite high. So if the cloud base allowed, we could fly right at the top. And then you've got, um, it's Kieville, isn't it? Uh, sorry, Hinton on Hedges. Kieville's the other down there, isn't down south. So you've got this as well. This is not looking very good. So it's a good job we didn't draw a black line for us. Otherwise, no, you'd now be rubbing it all back out again, wouldn't you? Need more nail polish, remember? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Can straight. So this is going to need a bit of um, tweaking. And if we carried on with that, yeah, it's clipping Wellsbourne. Uh, another another Kidderminster gas venting. Oh, so that's not restricted, but we'd have to just consider about that. And then after that, um, it gets quite close to one of the tops of the hills. So if the weather's nice, not a problem. But if otherwise, we might have to consider maybe going more around oh, here. Yes. As I said, already clipping wells, Paul. But that might be an advantage because in case we want fuel. So that's not the end of the world. All right. So it looks like at the moment, the beginning of the journey needs a bit of a tweak, doesn't it, Ross? Yeah. Okay. So the, so the million dollar question is, where to? Where are you going to go? How are you going to get around that? Can what I do you want to do? Oxford? You could do. Do you want to see what that does? Well, where is it? Oh, my yeah. <laughs> Let's get me line on the way. So if you just line up Oxford and your IP there. Yeah. Out Oxford, the air. So if we, if we did that, town, while I flew over the top of the airfield. You get a zone transit. It's only an ATZ though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not the not the end of the world. They can be quite busy, yeah. mm, so you know they're not always very happy to do that. And they have got a radar as well, actually, haven't they? Which is quite useful. So it's <laughs> yes. that like Yeah, you know, you're seen as well. Still, whoops. Go uh, get on. Go see you to Halton. You're in Halton on that road. Yep. So still doesn't actually resolve this problem down here, does it? No. Okay. I thought you meant Oxford Town. I began Princess Risborough. I think I'll go Princess Risborough. That's not fair. Ross doesn't know that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like now. All right. uh, or do we use checkers? Well, just out this way first of all. It oh, seems. It seems like actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good thing to learn. Princess when you Risborough. when you look at the bigger picture, you start to realise that the for now the obstacles are kind of around here, so around that corner of Luton, and then potentially over here for sort of Benson, etc., and and Bryars and whatnot. So it starts to almost create a little bit of a corridor that we're thinking about would be an easy route through. And so, yeah, actually, you know, we'll just get ourselves out over here somewhere would certainly simplify some of that. Yeah. OK, so I'm just going to um just going to remove that one for a second. Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Doesn't work very well. The mouse plugged in. That's it. OK, so. Yeah. Now I'll tell you what that has done. That's got us that's got us around maybe the Luton part of it, mm. etc., isn't it? And and then we're sort of off. Okay, that works. But we have then got Western on the Green. Can we fly over the top Western on the Green? Well, no, it's a danger area. It's pretty wooden. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and potentially they'll, they'll might be able to provide a service to get you across there. But what if they say no? That's just throwing your planning out the out the window, mm. isn't it? It's like oh no. Now you're going to try and do a diversion round it, those sorts of things. So it might be easy if we just avoid them first. That would just make life a touch easier. So where we're we going to go then? I know I would go. Yeah. 
Anybody got any suggestions online? Hey, John, how you doing? John Rice, John. Hi, Bill, sorry I'm late. late yeah, sorry, that's, from work. that's all right. Might help with some of your input. They're very quiet online tonight. I figured they're all eating, the, everybody's eating the tea. So we're just, um, just to quickly fill you in, John, we're doing a route not to Lake District, but we're going up to, um, to Wales. So let me just zoom out a second so you get a bit of an overview. So we're going from Elstree to Wales tomorrow morning to, to Lake Verney, Finwy. 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 No, they do pronounce it I'm sure they've said Verney. We looked it up and it was nonsensical. We'll just say Verney. <laughs> Google Translate. Yeah, we've got, we've got it on Google Translate. Yeah, we, we are saying, I'm asking one of the locals how to pronounce it. Ah. And we've got several answers. You can have a look at it. <laughs> you type it into Google Translate. Um, to so that's where we're off to, John, but we're just trying to work out how to get ourselves out of Elstree and around this corner. <laughs> There's a few obstacles in the way that we can handle, but we're just seeing if there's an easier way of dealing with this. Looking at, looking at that zoomed out view, it seems that we want to keep to the north because you've got an obstacle at Welshpool and obviously the rising ground will be on our left. Yes. Or we stay to the north. So it might be worth rooting north of Oxford. That already puts us north of the rest of the obstacles. It does indeed, doesn't it? And Ross, well, don't you route up to Turweston and that should get rid of the, the other danger area? Ah, now we're cooking. Yeah, so if I put... Um, I was uh, going to say that, but uh, two Johns think alike. So, Ross, one <laughs> of the really interesting things here, and yeah. it's actually having a half mil chart does also help slightly with this. One of the things we do is we get a bit bogged down sometimes in the, in the nitty, in the minutiae. We don't look at the big picture. Yeah. And so I've kind of been deliberately, especially with things like the Sky Dim, been keeping it fairly zoomed in. So have a look at the screen a minute. And you kind of go, oh, my God, there's all this and there's all that. But actually, when you just start zooming out, it becomes the picture becomes a bit clearer because you get rid of all the tiny detail. Yeah. And suddenly it's almost like a natural line starts to form to a degree. And you get to see maybe the, the things that are causing us problems at the moment, trying to avoid. And so somebody suggested, well, let's try it. Let's go up via Tur Western. And that takes us up there. And actually, that avoids some of those problems, doesn't it? We're just discussing. It might present a new problem as we try and go from Tur Western across. And namely, things like Wellsbourne. OK, well, yeah, they're, not really busy. they're not that busy. It's OK. We can, we can avoid it. Um, it does sort of start to get close to Birmingham, but we can look at whether we need to avoid that further. And whether we're going to think about avoiding high ground but again we'd be we'd be just sort of considering the weather as i said it's a little sometimes you've got to you've got to balance this as to what comes first now weather definitely affects so if we were to look at the forecast for tomorrow and discover that the cloud is uh, possi possibly a little bit on the lower side we would need to try and avoid higher ground and in fact we'd even be then thinking about whether we we're going to make it to wales so we'd have a backup plan and we'd head off somewhere else like fish and chips at cromer again whatever Somewhere where the the the, um, the ground is lower, okay. <clears throat> but it's that would certainly help by going via something like Tur Western. And remember, we haven't even looked at whether we uh, there's pretty things we want to have a look at on the way yet, have we? We haven't got to that side of things. Crossroad. So I don't want to cut. I don't want to make it sound. Oh my God, this is getting more confusing. There's a lot to juggle as to why you would choose a particular route. We wouldn't just say, oh, and draw a line, and that'll do. There's many things to consider, and this. In a minute, we might decide that actually, no, I don't want to do that, but uh, we've gone through some of those thought processes. Okay. But we don't want to just zigzag around on the screen, do we? Mm, yeah. <clears throat> so let's kind of just work with this one for the moment, going up via Tur Western. And, and then no we can... we're flying through. Right? Second? We're just flying through in no time, are we? Uh, what down there at Westcott? Yeah, Westcott yeah. I was just made this model flying, yeah, low level flying, model yeah. flying, yeah. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Should be quite isolated and not always all the time. And now flying over the top of Wellsbourne is not, you know, it's not that difficult. And in fact, we, um, yeah, Birmingham is three and a half thousand foot, this little stub here. And this one's two and a half thousand. So we could actually just go straight over the top, uh, just a little over 2,000 feet. Whoops. There, 2,159 feet. And we would actually be outside the ATZ anyway, but it'd still be a clever idea to talk to them, wouldn't it? Yeah. And we, to be honest, look, we've got plenty of time whilst we're heading towards them to get the call in to see if they've got any traffic. So that shouldn't trouble us flying over the top of Wellsbourne. It's an easy feature, isn't it? 
good for navigation to make sure you're on track. And one of the other half decent things about flying nearish to airfields is, I mean, we shouldn't be short on fuel at that point, but if the weather's not amazing, we might think, oh, come on, let's just land for a moment and work out what we're going to do, whether we're going to carry on or they'll go somewhere else for a change because right. you don't really want to try and do that in the air that's not so easy so we'll, we'll maybe leave that for a minute we'll just leave that on Wellsbourne just for now and see how that pans out um carrying on uh Redditch is quite big but it's not too difficult to fly around if we really wanted to this is the tall mass uh, that's the gas venting system we we're talking about so actually that avoids that and goes up the edge of Kidderminster so these are all quite good navigational features we could use Um, does avoid maybe the very highest point of the beginning of some of that higher ground and again wouldn't be too difficult actually to do a small deviation to go around the edge of that if needed so that's that's looking promising close to wells pool so if we were um, uh, needing to refuel that would be potentially a place to refuel at. again we'd need to now check wouldn't we yeah and um, but we can't check because it's now quarter to seven there's probably nobody there as into whether they're going to be open tomorrow and with fuel. So you can't leave this stuff worse to the last minute. It's not that easy. But otherwise, that's looking a bit better now. Any questions for that at the moment? So there we are. There's there's uh, one potential basic route that we then might want to tweak if there's other things of interest to, you want to see. Maybe Ross says, I'm bored of Princess Risborough. I want to go via checkers uh, go on get on the there that's it ah, that would work okay yeah that would probably be all right look that still avoids everything on the way up make your life a little bit easier still via Tower western Just if you wanted to take two rule though because how close you are to loosen there yeah 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 with the westerly really wind as well mm -hmm. it's got a good point <laughs> That's one thing I think at the Sky Demon sometimes because you can't configure how if you want to do like the pick two you can't because it's very good on the vertical radar I think isn't it mm -hmm. so you can see how close you are but I think yeah just if I um yeah, what just it does do from around. a warning perspective is bring up your within say two miles of control <laughs> airspace so that's probably not a good idea it's I wonder if it's something that um so Sky Demon are very good if you email them if you email them yeah, yeah exactly and if enough people have sort of said the same thing they mm. would now introduce that so that's yeah. not a bad feature to kind of just warn you that you your intended route You've doesn't take very you because they quite close. Do the ATZ, so they're like your route takes you very close to an ATZ, that's right. but not for example to to that if you plan yeah. your route to, yeah mm. no because don't forget this this corner here is right up at two and a half thousand feet which is where the ltma is in around here anyway so that would that part wouldn't concern me but you're getting a little close this year it's Holt, what are we worried about? but as far as luton's um uh, ct uh r's concerned there it shouldn't be too difficult to avoid that you've got boffington airfield for a start of haven't we that we're flying virtually mm. over yeah just to the south of it only just uh, and the vor so that shouldn't be too difficult and we could always just talk to Luton on the way past anyway couldn't we I'd missed actually yeah sorry that was the upper stub so, yeah it's yeah. the yeah this is the upper one so that's that's the corner that we really need to be careful of but if we talk to Luton or somebody that's providing like a farmer mm. a last service anyway that shouldn't be too much of a problem <clears throat> Halton yes we would need to be just careful of those wouldn't we just to make sure we don't get too close but it would that's work spot for people bumping into it yeah <clears throat> Where's that? Holton is the yeah. end. So you got Luton here. Yeah. Where's Holton? Oh, yes. Military. Is that those? What is it? Not those. Well, I think the Williams do fly out of them. They do, yeah. Yeah, they're going out of there, haven't you? Yeah, Peter yeah. flies out of them. Okay. Everybody happy with that so far? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, not that we want to you to be so don't take this the wrong way, but if the cloud base was a little bit lower and we're a little bit uncomfortable, maybe getting close to these peaks, we'd have a backup plan, wouldn't we? And if I just simply make life easier for a minute and pull it, if I just say Kidderminster and then we could route my march to sort of um uh, bridge north, that would quite literally keep away from all the high ground, wouldn't it? And then we've only got to tackle this last bit going into um, Lake Verney with a backup plan of if this is just not working, we can easily turn southbound and just going to Wellspool, for instance. So that works quite well. Yes. 
Uh, I'm not going to go too far down the route of what about other features you now want to go and see on the way. You know, well, that's something that could just be tweaked, can't you? You can make minor diversions just to go and have a look at something if there was something of great interest on the way up. <clears throat> One of the uh, around the UK trips we did in a few years back, um, somebody was very, very interested in stately homes and castles. And so literally they zigzagged the route that we did, but zigzagged all the way around, mm -hmm. visiting all the stately homes and castles. Uh, I think they did an extra 10 hours of flying compared to the rest of us. It was something bizarre like that, having done this additional routing. Anyway, but um, they, they, were, they were incredibly happy <laughs> to have done all that, but it's a fantastic. I think we're looking for someone to buy it. <laughs> anyway, right, looking good so far. What should we do next? If we can do a turn. Yeah. Are we going to come back the same way? We'll make life easy for now and just say yes we'll just yeah. come back the same way okay but don't forget about the, the what about the life change and what about the return are you going to say do the exactly the same route or are you going to jazz it up a bit and go a different way and then you were starting about timings yeah that's that's right but uh the wind direction obviously taking potentially longer if you've got yeah, a, a headwind coming back point. so um have you got that on your map now ross Let's add that in. Go on, you add that in whilst I Sorry. carry on chatting for a minute. So we've got, got Western. Uh, so we've got a turning point to Western. And then it's uh, Kidminster. We're going over the top of Kidminster. Move everybody again. So if you give Kidminster a circle, if anyone wants to go up to that other place, Bridge North. Bridge North. Bridge North. Bridge North. Missing an E. <laughs> Bridge North, yeah. And remember, this is uh, this is not the definitive way of doing this. It's just one of the ways, or one of the things to yeah, consider. So the line yep. He wants um, to send me a message. Oh, oh in open office, got it. PP box video, yeah, fine. And then, uh, if if Ross, um, because he's very kindly, as you can see drawing it all out if he was to measure it all it would probably end up being something similar to 139 nautical miles you like to measure it. and uh, allegedly you know if you if you flew exactly 85 knots all the way without stopping etc etc one hour 28 minutes now we that hasn't added on start up start up oh, shut down hover taxiing when you get there circling round variations in speed that will inevitably happen doing your site becky yeah. yep um it, it, we, i tend to find experience tells me that most people don't exceed the speed that much they fly slower than mm. so whilst you think oh by the time i've gone five knots faster and five knots slower and five knots faster and five knots slower it all averages out yeah but the problem is is you go five knots faster only for a short period and then you spend five knots or ten knots slower for a much longer period and it takes longer doesn't it as a net result that's why we always try to be a little bit conservative on the the actual cruise speed it tends to make some of these numbers a little bit more realistic depends on how accurate somebody's at flying mm. so i'd look at that and think one hour 28 you can probably nudge that up to two hours straight away of running time right. and now we're getting into that whole up ah, can we take the fuel for that <clears throat> and ross is like yeah of course we can no problems at all yeah but you've got to refuel somewhere haven't you yeah because they haven't got any fuel at the hotel we think oh okay all right well let's just pretend we've already phoned um, wellsport and they said yeah yeah we're open tomorrow weather forecast looks lovely no problems at all we think all oh, right well look it's only down the road so we could just refuel on the way back couldn't we but for example if then they ran out of fuel halfway through the day yes it is quite room. rare but i have it's too yeah, possible i've, I've <laughs> had uh, to us on the other i've only yeah, yeah. stand down run out of fuel he yes i think i was all right in the capri no can't remember what happened there what we, 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 we had just enough to oh we had there. enough to we carry on didn't we yeah yeah um and i've been um, and uh, i've been one other place whereby they said they got fuel we've headed off and then up in there they said our pump's broken yeah. was like, oh. so it was a quick divert to cranford i think at the time i went mm -hmm. to to go and get some fuel from there anyway so it is always you know we always do always want some backup plans you know what if there that was, was a chrono call wasn't it we had to go a little snoring to get some fuel. Uh, oh yes, there we are. Yeah, so there's there's another place. Cool, that was a while ago. I remember that trip. <laughs> yeah, we went to a tiny little farm, wasn't it? Yeah, a yeah. little farm, brilliant. Well, they're, they're harvesting potatoes. 
Yes. Yeah. 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 So we all descended upon this farm because it said they got fuel. The guy on the yeah, yeah, got fuel, no problem at all. Then and you end <laughs> well, no, 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 that was the place we went to then refuel because we couldn't get fuel elsewhere. That was a plan. I was in the 22 and panics and ended up landing in front of the wrong pump and you had to move the helicopter. <laughs> I wasn't going to add that bit on the story, but I'm compared to... <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a good adventure, and it was a farm, and there were tractors going around, and they were harvesting the potatoes whilst we're you know trying to land and pick up the fuel. Why did they have abgas? Because they they there's it is a farm strip. It's a it? it's a farm oh, strip. Oh okay. Yes. Oh, you yeah. only said farm, and after yeah, so there's a farm <laughs> strip. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's over oh, yeah. where we're yeah, yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, that's great fun, wasn't it? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All huddled around this fuel pump, trying to get the fuel out of it and pushing Jonathan because he'd stuck like gone by the wrong pump. Little snoring. Little snoring. Anyway. Fantastic. Okay, so for now I'm fairly comfortable that we could either, you know, if we're getting a bit shy on fuel, we could nip into World's Ball, or we could certainly afterwards out of Lake Verney come back and get fuel. What would be better, Ross? Would it be better to get the fuel before we go to Lake Vernon just to be on the safe side in case we're worried they're going to run out of fuel? Yeah. I'll... What? But what might that impact? Uh, the return. It's not fair. He doesn't know Lake Vernon. He doesn't know what we're landing at. No, but... <laughs> oh, well, right. It's to, because now we're fully loaded on fuel. Now we've got to land. Yeah. Land yeah, that's right. Now, I know you haven't sort of done confined areas and those sorts of things, but mm -hmm. looking at looking at this map straight away, it, it's in amongst the hills isn't it? Mm. Without a doubt. And it's a hotel, a hotel amongst the hills. There's a reasonable chance there's not a big landing site. Also, yeah, we'd be on the limit of performance. Good. There we are. So flight performance and planning. So mm. Ross has just highlighted, actually, it might not be quite such a clever idea because we're going to be heavy. And of course, that will um, impact on the performance of the helicopter. Just when we need a lot of performance, or we might need a lot of performance, we've just stuck a load of fuel in it and made it heavy. And what if you do the halfway point, couldn't you? I suppose so you could get like half tanks, yes. at least it allows you to get That's further it. south. Yeah, there's many yeah. different things to think of. It's like Peter said, get, get a splash of fuel halfway up so that you've got a bit more than you require to go to Lake Vernie and come back out again, but not too heavy. Mm. So, as I said, there's a lot of juggling. What, what comes first? You can't just purely say, this is how we're doing it. And that's it. there's a lot to consider, isn't there? And making sure we've got lots of backup plans, lots of options. So we're not rigid in there. In a, uh, yeah. way of doing this but lots of back outs good um okay so yeah we we basically want to probably and, and when we if we get time to look at the site we'd want to go in relatively light because you might discover we need quite a bit of performance out of the helicopter so we wouldn't want to take our masses of fuel but we could just nip in there and just have a little extra splash if necessary we get up there but this is going to impact on time so every stop you make at an airfield, roughly how long do you think that would take anybody? So we're just gonna we're just gonna nip into Welshpool on the way, just to grab a little bit of fuel. How much longer would that make that journey That's take? So much longer than you think. Really. Yeah, I'd say if, yeah. If you allow an hour, then you I would allow an hour. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to get it done in less than an hour. Of some places, some places longer. The pumps. And... Yeah. So any additional stop, whilst it's a safe thing to do. Is going to impact on time, yeah. And time, if we're not careful, I was going to say right. half an hour, but that probably just allows enough time for winding down and then starting up again, doesn't it? Not well, half hour. Half hour, you you've got to really know somewhere well, and you've got they've got to be on the ball, ready for you. Literally, you're, landing fee and fuel. You've right. arrived. You yeah. shut down. They're already literally, you know. Yeah. And this is assuming I've got to move the helicopter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yes, how long our stop was recently? Yeah. We've done. So, I mean, we've we've made some quick ones in the past, but they know we're coming. Yeah. yeah. But when we do our around the UK, it's, it's, they know we're coming and it's fully prepared, etc. And they can be pretty quick. But you can imagine now you multiply that by several helicopters because we didn't just say going by yourself. There might be three helicopters going and all three are going to pile in for fuel. Now, it doesn't take three hours, but it will increase that time even further. There might be a few so it sounds different. like old fashioned Formula One where somebody's ready with a pump. Just just. Yeah. That's you know it. What? <clears throat> we stopped at Chroma and it took us about 35 minutes and they were on the ball. And that was quite quick, yeah. They That's were not ready. Right. We landed at yes. the pumps. Everything got filled. It's almost impossible time. to do it less than that with checking the helicopter over as well, don't forget. Most yeah. of the things. So do, just shy always minutes. can think about that. Every stop will add possibly an hour mm. on the journey. Mm. So we won't, I don't want to make any unnecessary stops. 
because we're getting hungry. <laughs> this is assuming we got away on time at half past uh, at 9.30. Uh, sorry, 10, that, yeah, 9.30, local time. Right, okay. Um, anything else we need to do with this for the moment? As far as... I don't know, what's next? Do you want uh, to configure the thing? Because one of the things, um, um, not so much for the exam per se, but in real life is you want to make this a fairly slick process, don't you? You know, what's, what is a what is quite a nice rhythm of how to do this, even just this part of the moment, this planning side of things? Because I don't want to keep coming up against problems and now I've got to change everything. I want to try a bit like a confined area. If you can do it in a nice order, it flows and it becomes quite proficient. If you stab and jab at it in the wrong order or, or a weird order, it will take you twice as long to achieve the process. I'll probably be looking at who I'm talking to on the way. Yeah, so that's that's got to be in, in amongst there, isn't it? We've got to think about who we're talking to. We're asking for a mated brief. Aren't we? Kind of along those lines. I'm just trying to think about what might impact this route. Are there any more changes we need to apply to it? I mean, we've got Ross to draw it on there. Human factor. Yeah, and so we'll um, we'll kind of chuck some of those things in in a minute. I mean, if we plan on going tomorrow, it's a bit difficult to see exactly what the weather like until the morning anyway. We can get a little bit of a feel for it. Let's just say the the general forecast for tomorrow for this trip looks it looks yeah it looks all right looks decent. So we've got the the cloud base. We know the wind. There's no particularly strong wind and there's no particularly low cloud. MSAs then in general. Yeah, good. So we're starting to think about actually how high should we fly this mm. and things like minimum safe altitude versus planned altitudes. So what is what is a what is an MSA a minimum safe altitude? It's on the chart. So uh, Mount, is it Montserrat? <laughs> Ross, <laughs> Ross, who told you that, by the way? Please tell. Just do, just do drop them in. No, drop them it? in the book. No, Ross, no, <laughs> it's not, that's, that's Ross not. you know those faint blue numbers? Yeah. There's a key on the chart. Have a look at what it actually says about those faint blue numbers. Not to me. So Ross has, Ross, has, Ross has spotted these, which I have heard people use as minimum safe altitude before. Oh, yeah. So what are they? So maximum elevation figure. Oh, they're MEFs. Oh, More acronyms, I'm afraid, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought you were getting the hang of them. And the idea is within that kind of, that, that area, that quadrant, that sector, allegedly adding, rounding it up to the next 100 foot, that's the highest thing yes. in that area. So very crudely, you could say, right, well, I'll stick 500 foot straight away on top of that. That means that you're now planning on flying this leg at 3,800 feet. And that might not be necessary mm. because remember that that might just be highlighting something that's miles away from where we're going. So you can't just simply pluck those off and use them as, as, as minimum safe altitudes, even if you stuck 500 foot on there. That might still not be sufficient for the obstacle itself. Okay, yes. so so therefore, what is a what is a minimum safe altitude? Anybody else want to chip in? A thousand feet above the highest fixed obstacle. Um, that would certainly be something. Yeah, That's just thinking about rule five, but. Anybody that flies, what do you use? Do you have a specific formula or do you judge it by the route itself or? I see where you can get 500 feet. I tend to do 500 feet, but then looking for where, what's triggering the three three, for example, in that particular yeah. example. Because also like, if you're, you know, you're crossing a box like that, you know, there's no need to exactly yeah, fly at three three that's like, right if you just were somewhere it's like it's a thousand feet difference, isn't it, between boxes. So you don't have to go up to then come back down. Yeah, that's right. It's a bit like um, we get caught by some of the, the towers and masts of London in this area here. Well, if you're flying north away from it, we're going nowhere near them. So they're, they're there for, 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 for a very good reason that if you were flying within that area, maybe you're doing a diversion of some description. It's warning you, watch it, because something around here is possibly 3,300. I'm guessing it's the top of a, of a mountain, isn't it? And it will be. All right. So... Nobody's come up with a magic formula for a minimum safe altitude at the moment. Is there one? 
there there isn't a necessarily a magic formula, is yeah. there? And I think that's quite good that you do, that we don't just simply say, oh, I always just do this. You need to be a little bit more thoughtful about it, depending on where you're flying, what you're flying, those sorts of things. But you really ought to have as a rock bottom straight away a 500 foot one, shouldn't you? Absolutely. Because otherwise it's A, potentially illegal and B, might not be very safe if you're starting to fly lower than 500 foot or if you're planning to do an entire route at you know less than 500 foot just just it's just not doable is it so that ought to be straight away a kind of a rock bottom shouldn't it mm. obviously then if you're flying over a city then the rules change as well absolutely good so if you're flying over a congested area then you've got to be like jonathan said a thousand foot above the highest fixed object over the top and we have said we are going to be flying over some of those areas haven't we so that's going to modify it so if you're not careful the next thing you know is we we're going to be looking at the route and saying oh god we're going to be have to be right old up and down aren't we so potentially as we don't take my word on this but as we fly over here we could be relatively low because there's nothing particularly built up then we've got some high ground right we've got to go up oh then it's quite low ground then we've got to be down oh we're quite near aylesbury so we've got to be a thousand foot above all that lot so we're back up again remember these are minimum safe altitudes but this would be that'd be uh this that'd be quite hard to mark you know multiple minimum safe altitudes on a single leg is not an easy thing to do so it'd be probably better if possible to say no i'll tell you what the worst case scenario this is where we need to be no lower than this because of a particular reason and you can mark that reason on the chart couldn't you just just for instance if there was a tall mask near this room at, uh, at the beginning oh Catherine, <laughs> let's just mute you <laughs> uh, there's a she unmuted herself now. Um, there's, there's a tall mast down this end, so we could say, right, we need to make sure we're high to begin with, but the rest of it actually is not so bad. But that's where the area is that we need to be particularly careful of if for some reason we were having to fly a tiny bit lower than we would like to be because the cloud just happened to be a smidgen low there for the moment. So, minimum is safe altitudes. Straight away, I said, slap on 500 foot, but 500 foot onto what? Anything under the route? Well, the highest thing that your line goes across, I suppose, then, and a couple of miles either side. Yeah, so you've got to think about, okay, it's obviously under the route itself, but what about either side? Like the drift. But, but how much either side? How much are you going to drift? Are you planning on doing little wiggles and diversions? So you've got to think about factor all of that. You could have a little rule of thumb and say, you know what, five miles left and five miles right. So I'll have a 10 mile corridor that this is going to be my I'll look at things that are on that route and add 500 foot to them or a thousand foot. if That's what the law of the rules dictate. But in some areas, you might think no, no, it doesn't need to be five miles either side. It can be two miles either side because I'm following a road. So it's very easy to follow. So this, so I don't want to say this is how you do it. I just want to make you think about it. And come up with something that works for you individually that is sensible and safe because you can't just simply say right i'm going to do two thousand foot above everything because it just won't work <laughs> will it it'll put you straight away into controlled airspace it just doesn't work and the other thing i've found that um if we uh if we were to look at plugs i'm not sure we'll get to those tonight but we'll see how we go <laughs> is that if you make your minimum safe altitudes ridiculously high you'll be very happy to break them because you think, oh, well, I allowed to quite a big buffer in that, so I can quite easily dip down below that. But you also don't want to make them ridiculously low that you're scraping things, do you? So you've got to make them sensible that if on the route we're starting to descend down to a minimum safe altitude, you're already now thinking, right, if I hit that number, I do need to start thinking about other plans. I can't just keep dipping down below it because I haven't allowed a, a massive great margin in there. It's see, keeping me safe, but see what I mean? Mm. <clears throat> okay. Right, so yeah, minimum safe altitude need to be considered. And then, of course, planned altitudes. And so how high you want to fly. The cloud quite often dictates that. So does controlled airspace. If it's class A, if it's class D airspace or something along those lines, that's all right. We can fly through. That's not that difficult to go through some parts of it. So, for instance, when we whizzed back up here near Birmingham, I sort of think, oh, well, look, you know, Around this area, the airspace is, is you know, the Class A is four and a half thousand foot. So why don't we just go over the top of Wellsbourne at, at 3,000 feet? Uh, and, okay, that clips that corner of Birmingham, but I was planning on talking to them anyway. 
I'm sure they'd give me a zone transit. Are you sure? Well, yes, is it, isn't it? Yeah. No, the chances are they'll they probably ask you to remain clear of their um, their CTA because yeah. their workload is too high and you're only just clipping it, so why can't you just go around it? <clears throat> Um, so planned altitudes again there's there's quite a, a, a school of thought in there as to higher is generally safer to a degree isn't it because it gives you more time to deal with problems yeah navigation becomes easier the higher you go generally speaking because you can see so much more as long as the cloud allows it as long as the airspace allows it <clears throat> But if you're going over an area that's very pretty and you want to you specifically flew over it, you might want to plan to be a little bit lower so you can enjoy it a bit more. Okay. Um, so again, I'm not, I won't go too heavily into the planned altitude as long as we've touched upon the subject of think about the lowest you can safely fly, minimum safe altitude. Think about what you'd like to fly that's going to keep you away from controlled airspace to make life a bit easier. Certainly class A airspace, you don't want to be skimming that, do you? And to reduce your workload. If your workload lighter, it's probably going to be easier slash safer. Okay. Righty ho. But of course, we do then eventually get into the, the hills, etc. And we can see that some of these points fire. Come on, mouse. Uh, oh, that's because I'm covering us. You guys are all covering it. Oh, damn it. Uh, I'll have to wish you back over there for a minute. If you look at that writing down the bottom left corner, for instance, you can see supposedly around here, some of that elevation is 14, 15, 16, 100 feet. So we are going to definitely need to plan this leg here, climbing, aren't we, up to an amount. Mm. That's a, a minimum of 500 foot above that terrain is an absolute minimum straight away. Good, right. So so let's just pretend that we, we, we've worked out minimum safe altitudes. We've worked out what we would like to fly, planned altitudes, because... Of, of various reasons. That's done for now. What's next? Halfway markers. Sorry? Halfway markers on the lines, on the legs. Yeah, so things to think about are um, uh, uh, timing marks. You know, are we doing this via map, stop, watch, and compass? Are we using a, a, a GPS? Are we doing a combination of it? Are you trying to stretch your abilities and, and you know, practice your heading holes and your, your timings and those sorts of things? Or are you being a little bit more relaxed about it and just I uh, will just wing it and see how we go. All right. Anything else? Um, at Lake Vern, Vernie, are we going to call it Vernie? Yeah, for that. Yeah, I mean you can't Lee do worse Bernie, than Vernie. We'll call it that. It's um, what's the altitude? You if this goes out on social media, we're going to get flooded um, with <laughs> cross people, aren't we? Saying we've been mispronouncing it's a cross it. Cross Comes from I my do, incompetence. Not I do apologise now language. if we are mispronouncing it. Put that disclaimer out there. Would you have to look at like engine performance? You know, at, uh, at yeah, good. Level. So that's one of the things to consider, isn't it? Like, so we're, I'm just we're just trying to get a little bit of a list on the go here. We've got to think about um, 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 with the, the pressure altitude. Yep, timings, things. potential performance of the aircraft. So we might need to therefore look at whether it can hover in ground effect hover out ground effect at the altitudes that we're planning to land at mm. could be a very hot day good and of course this goes hand in hand with weight and balance doesn't it yeah, you've got adjusted weight for the side as well because the weight doesn't stay the same the weight doesn't well, no, you burn fuel. Yeah, yeah. So we start with one weight, but we're going to now yeah. plan what the weight's going to be when we get there. So we got right. what weight do we want to arrive at? Yes. Arrive at? Yes. So you might have a. You might have a magic number of saying, well, when we get to Lake Vernie, we want to make sure we've got no more than 20 gallons of fuel. And when we get there, we've got 21 gallons of fuel, right? Fly around for a few more minutes then. Burn, that, look. And burn that little bit of fuel off. I find it easy to work backwards on these things. Yeah, with what you would like to arrive at weight-wise, yeah. but that would now also dictate uh, coincide with how much fuel you need to get off to the next place to refuel. And so there's, let's say, there's a lot of what comes first. So we're just trying to think. Weight and balance, performance. Uh, daylight, depending on the time of year. Yep, let's just say that's pretty good. You know, we've got a nice yeah. long day to deal with, to handle. Yep. But yep. Pretty 
frequencies. We said that we've talked about that already. We just touched upon, you know, we're going to consider who we're going to talk to, what type of service you're going to get from them, when to talk to them. Are they even open? Uh, yeah, that's right, John. Yeah, we've been we've been down that one. What if, uh, yeah, we're, we're all planning to stop off, not on the way in, but on the way out into Wellspool to get fuel because we don't want to add fuel on the way in because it makes us heavy and that might impact on the performance of the helicopter such that it might make landing there very, very tricky. So we want to try ideally arrive late, uh, arrive light, not late. <laughs> <laughs> want to arrive in light. That's it. Definitely arrive light. Like diversions or something like that. I mean, you kind of plan them on the route. With yeah, that's right. And we've been, yeah, we've been discussing that. So, of course, you've been planning that sort of mm -hmm. subconsciously. That's just right. To highlight the point. And we and we're going past quite a few airfields. Yeah. So there's many airfields to duck into if we decide that yeah. things are all getting a little bit too much for us, or we have a warning light on. You know, the various worlds born Wolverhampton. About diversion airfields. Yes. If they require PPR, but obviously it's only a diversion. That'll go that yeah. yeah that's right so for the most part if you've got a problem you need to divert because of the, anything to be mm -hmm. honest it could be the weather it could be you don't feel well a passenger's not well there was a warning light come on you're just not enjoying the flight you can divert and they should you tell them you're diverting because of x because y and z okay. and they should make it very easy for you to go in and land and because it'd be dangerous to not to because it could lead to an accident couldn't it mm. But it'd be very sensible for us to maybe carry some, especially if we've got any planned diversion there, to, we need to carry those plates okay. with us to make life easy. And I have even in the past actually called various places when we do our, our, some of our big trips around the UK and whatnot. I have called airfields that are on the way to say, look, there's a chance we might need to dive in because of fuel. Is it all right if I just leave it a little bit loose and uh, that we might need, we might come in there? No, just so you're aware of it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no problem yeah. at all. We've got fuel. We're open till this time. I think good, right. I know that one's in the bag, and if we need it, no effort. They, they're kind of semi-expecting us. We um, haven't coloured in the map either yet, have we, in terms of circle things? Or, or, yeah. Mm. That's right, yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's, there's possibly a bit of marking up of the map to be yeah. done very shortly as well. You want to have an arrival um, alternate as well. It's the lesson I've learned the hard way. Yeah, you get to your private site. Yes. Actually, it's not suitable anymore. Yes. When Good. you get there, and this has happened to me, I've arrived at the private site and I got there and there's a big bonfire. Yeah. So that was things change, that's right. Yeah, it's not quite it's not as, as as Google Earth appears because yeah. the image is different. So things alter. Yeah, you uh, you, you decide you just don't have the performance to land there. For can't instance. get in, yeah. Yeah, even arrival alternative. and that's again. So Wellspool is quite a good. Um, it's yeah. quite it's nearby. So yeah, there's no guarantee you can land there. What if you get in? And we've had this before. There's another helicopter in the way. Not yeah. one of ours. Like, oh yeah, you're not here. <laughs> <laughs> had that before. Crafty so and so. Yeah. So do think about where you're going to go if if you can't actually land there. These are all really good thoughts and things you would now plan out for. Like I said, we won't have time to do everything tonight. Mm. We're just trying to make sure we've covered as much as possible and looked at some things in greater detail. Um, okay, so somewhere along the lines then, therefore, if we've decided this route's pretty good, we've thought about who we're going to talk to, we're starting to make a bit of a frequency list up and think about those calls we're going to make. Um, we decided that uh, the heights we're going to fly at and, and those sorts of things, it's probably time to think about the drift of the aircraft, isn't it? Because we need to think about how long it's actually going to take. Now, so I know Skydeam is doing some of this for us. So if I just click down there, you start to see some of the things it's pre-calculated. It's already looked at the wind, supposedly tomorrow morning, looked at the wind, and therefore done some of those calculations for us. But you would have to do that. You'd have to look at the Form 214 to, to find those spot winds. And you might not be able to do that till the morning because the 214s come out in the morning, not day beforehand. So sometimes in, in, the, in the process of planning, this is as far as you might get, as far as that part's concerned. So you start to create your plug that goes in your knee ball, but it's going to be a lot of blank spaces to be filled in in the morning. Well, we said we're going at 9.30. By the time you get here, the traffic's been bad. There's no time for a cup of tea. You need to go and check the helicopter. You need to get planning, don't you? And the more you can do the night before or the day before, or sometimes with big journeys, several weeks beforehand, you start pre-planning all this out and start thinking about the different directions of wind. Anyway, okay, so. Because there's a lot you can do. 
way in advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can start the process well in advance. Whether like this, this is this is actually a trip I want to do at some point um, in the not too distant future when we've when we've got uh, a nice weather window and one of those things. Yeah, it's a lovely place to go to. So really, kind of planning it out, just seeing what's going on. If anything has particularly changed, good. Um, well, we do have the advantage of supposedly, and we will double check again in the morning that all this is accurate. But what this is creating for us down here is is basically the plug itself, isn't it? We can now mark the chart up with, and we see how we add heading boxes in there with um, as much information as you like, the height you're planning to fly at, the speed timings, you can even add fuel burns and those sorts of things on there. Mm -hmm. Witch's hat sometimes they get cold. Adam calls it witch's hat. And you'll create something vaguely similar. I'll just do it on here because everybody can see it then. Interesting, it does create an MSA for you, don't you? What yeah. They use. Well, so it's you a very configure yeah. It, yeah. Yes, it's whatever yeah. you configure it to. So you've got to ah, watch yeah. you're not using somebody else's configuration. You've got to make sure you're happy with that. That's why I said don't just never blindly read what what mm. it might come up with. Remember, I haven't even played around with the height, so this is why it's going to warn you down this one, because the planned height is actually lower than the um, than the elevation of the terrain and whatnot. <laughs> I say because I didn't pull them around or anything. I might go back and yeah. do that in a minute. So you'll end up creating. Uh, I have to move them around again. Actually, I'll tell you what. I'll just minimise. Come on. That's it. Um, You're also got... not applying this on the block. <laughs> That's it. Done. It's done, Richard again. <laughs> Why does it do that? Uh, it's in um, aircraft. Somehow, somewhere along the lines, I used it for Richard, um, and it's. It's now. Well, I put it in the cloud then, because maybe it's. A bit I've, I've have I've done it. I've synced yeah. with the cloud, but it's um. Uh, oops, it's in it somewhere. Can't remember where it is. No, it's not in there, is it? It is in planning options, isn't it? Mm. Sorry, just bear with me. Uh, oops. Now, I presume yeah. the only reason it has the person in there is for when you actually uh, file flight plans. Where is it? God, I can't remember which way around yeah, this is in there, isn't it? Some tools that we really play with. Planning this options. Yeah, why has it got Richard in there again? That's very strange. Right. And I will just um I'll just put that one up a little bit because otherwise it's a little bit on the low side. And I'm at a funny angle, so I'm struggling to see it. Use root level there is. I don't want to blanket it, I want it to bump that up to let's just say three thousand for a minute. There we are. I'll do. Let's try that. Three. Right, that's better. I'll do for a minute. So yes, you'll create some sort of a a kneeboard plug that will look vaguely similar to some of this sort of thing. You'll have what you do. You know your turning points. Your from and to. Um, your what you plan to be is your minimum safe altitude, having taken into consideration all the terrain and obstacles, and added what you think is sensible to be on there and safe and legal. What you're actually planning to do, and with a bit of luck, there's actually quite a big split between the two, giving you a nice margin of room for error. So if you not, Ross has not been flying very accurate, mm. he does fly accurately, by the way. And on that first leg, for instance, uh, let's do um, this one. And he's dropped down to 1600 foot. Well, it's okay. We're still 200 foot above your MSA. Okay, your, your, your altitude control is not great, but maybe you're distracted thinking about other things or just having a chat or you're enjoying the view or you deliberately flew a little bit lower to go and have a closer look at something. That's cool. So it gives you that muff buffer, doesn't it? Mm. That margin. If your planned, if your planned altitude was only 100 foot above your MSA, you need to be a lot more accurate with your, with your um, altitude control and know what you could go up to as well, of course. So maybe you think, actually, you know what, I'm just going to go a bit higher than I planned. Airspace is 2,500 feet. I can easily grab another 200 foot or 300 foot on top of what I'm doing. <laughs> You've got what allegedly is your indicated airspeed, what you plan to fly at with the um, with the black. That should be your uh, black line on the chart, the true track. So that's, if you measure it with a protractor, it should yeah. match up with the same, shouldn't it? And then what it would be magnetic. Now around here, there's, there's, there's pretty much zero magnetic variation. We're discussing this earlier. It's just gone on to east, but it's not enough around here to make a difference uh in fact it's, it has made one degree yeah one in degree up there minutes. it hasn't even made a difference over in wales according to that has it at the moment then of course it would look at the wind and with your whiz wheel it'll work out 
because of the direction of the wind, you're going to need to steer pretty much because the wind's relatively light and straight behind is um, very little drift. But you're going to be flying faster. Distance 21, therefore it'll only take 13 minutes. And you would add that as necessary onto your chart. Some of those, some of the information make life a bit easier for yourself. Happy with that? Yes. So you'd come up with all your list of frequencies, et cetera, you're going to talk to them. All those sorts so that's of a lot things. of frequencies. Would you kind of like just narrow that down a little bit just to say? Yeah, from the, so and... the sky dim is just flagging up everything that's kind of vaguely close to us or that we might want. So, in traffic. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen that one. Yeah, yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a, traffic. There's a little frequency there. I'm going to monitor that. Oh, that's... Oh, that's quite but anyway, you would create your plot. Yeah. Good. Okay, so it's looking good. We've got a chart with some with some stuff on it. Ross is having a look. Yes. You've got some sort of a kneeboard plug coming together quite nicely now. Get some fuel circles on there. Drift line. in all the same thing. We figured that it's going to take best part of two hours if we add a bit of allowance both ends and maybe you've not been flying quite as efficiently as you should be or the speed you've been flying at so a couple of hours so we're now into the whole fuel mm -hmm. so we need a we want ideally two hours worth of fuel to use don't we kind of as more or less as a minimum if possible so we'd want a little bit extra and depending how far away airfields are for diversions for fuel depends on how much extra maybe you'd consider to take so if your route takes you quite close to quite a number of airfields, we can be a little bit more relaxed about not having to take another hour's worth of fuel for diversions. Whereas when you're in the middle of nowhere, when you when you go up up north, up yeah. north, there's like airfields nowhere. There's nowhere to get fuel. Like the Lake District, beautiful, but there's nowhere to get fuel around there. It's very difficult. So you'd carry a much bigger contingency to get you to the fuel stops. Whereas you fly around here, I mean, there's an airfield literally every five minutes, isn't there almost, it seems, which is great. You could potentially divert into uh, okay, so we're into um, into the whole weight and balance thing. So remember, we want at least two hours worth of fuel. That's usable fuel, mm -hmm. plus your minimum, which you we say you've got to land with, which is five for me. Yeah, that's right. For yourself, for higher, we'll say five. If you're an instructor, we'll let you go down to three. So and we and you with an instructor on this route, so you can go down to three. But I mean, that's cutting it yeah, right yeah. down to the line, isn't it? So two as well, two hours worth of fuel in an R twenty two is. Oh, I have to see and work this out. Uh, so eight gallons an hour, yeah. and his does burn reliably oh, eight really. gallons. We want okay. sixteen eight. gallons of usable fuel, plus your three that you've got to have as an absolute rock bottom. We're meant to be landing. That's nineteen, and then you might want to add some extra fuel on top. Let's stick another half hours worth. So twenty three gallons of fuel, but can we take twenty three gallons of fuel? How am I doing in time? Not too bad. Have a quick look at weight and balance, shall we then? Where am I? I'm over there. Where would you find the um the well, you're, luckily enough, if you go into, oops, there it is. It will be programmed into this but at some point in the course. We'll Absolutely, it, yes. You need to along. double check that it is correct, that things haven't changed. Right, I just need to um, get everybody to follow us now. Oops. Thank you very much. So, we've seen this basically. Everybody's still there online at the moment. You're following, okay? But what's also interesting is to see. Yeah, yep, all good. Hey. That's really important. It's either really boring because nobody's saying anything, or it's very interesting because nobody's saying anything. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's interesting, Paul. Good. Okay. So we're now into the whole um, weight and balance of the um, the helicopter. And we just picked on his for a minute because we, we picked on Ross as we often do. Because yeah, he's, he's quite keen to I'm say, here. he's yeah, he's here and he's quite keen to answer things and whatnot. All right, so it's um, 
We're just looking in the tech look at the yeah, good. basic information. Yep. So, so here's so making sure yep, it does. Double match. check, look, 885. Yeah. And it's basic longitudinal at the moment, CFG arm 103.54. That is correct. Cool. And therefore the moment should theoretically be correct as well if the if the spreadsheet's been configured correctly. So again, doesn't mean to say it will be. Always a rounding error. Are those uh are those passenger and pilot weights correct? Absolutely. So what I've done is here is any green box is something you need to alter. You need to put your ah. numbers in there. That's the idea. Because you, I've done it. These are protected cells. So you can't alter these anyway. Okay, right. Yeah. The amount of pizza you guys eat, there's no way anyone is. Oi, <laughs> well, it, I haven't, we haven't said who's in it yet. I take offence to that. So uh, who's going with you, Ross? Is it me? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll leave it. So, uh, <laughs> it's the longest one. So, um, oh, why did I not click on it? Come on. Is it, uh, is it on very lonely or something at the moment? Ah, oh, it's doing something stupid. Is it because why is it? Oh, no, it is there. It's okay. It's just not obvious. Three pounds. All right. We'll do that one in a second. Right. That's weird. Okay. So, uh, Naked in the morning in the bathroom. After I've after I've had a wee and whatnot, I'm about one forty five, six, seven pounds, something like that. So shall I put that? No, no. not unless no. you want me to come flow with you. I've <laughs> been not eating anything with no clothes on. No, I do. I do draw. <laughs> I do draw the line, okay. You know, that's, that's beyond the line of duty, that is right. So, yeah, I'm gonna come with some clothes on, okay. And I'm gonna have a coat with me, I'm gonna have some shoes with me, or I'm gonna have my lunch bag with me just in case. I always take some emergency food, so it's always a good idea to fly with me. I've always got that, always and, some, and some water. And uh, yeah, suddenly I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit heavier than what I was in the morning, aren't I? And I've just eaten, like Darby thankfully said, very kind of him. I've eaten a load of pizza. Well, actually, do you know, I haven't had a single piece of pizza yet. No. So I probably ought to bump that up a little bit. So how about we say 160 for me? That's a bit more realistic. So Ross, same for you, I'm afraid. 178. 178, that's with clothes on, yeah. shoes, coat. Well, not, I don't want to wear a coat. So. Well, you better bring one. Look where we're going. We're going to Wales. Well, that's in, in baggage. But you yeah, are, but that's allowing for it. So the front, oh, I see. Sorry, I do apologize. Yeah, okay. So he's going to put yeah, yeah, got it. All right. Uh, all right, in that case, I'm taking mine down to 150 then. Aren't <laughs> You've got a 10 pound coat. <laughs> right. What's it got in the pocket? Ross, what have you got under your seat? Coat. Coat. You've got to take your coat. I won't let you go. Oh, about I'm going to need a, a litre bottle of water, um, just some snacks. So, it's a freshwater lake. You don't need water. Five pounds in weight. Ten pounds, five pounds, five, ten. Red in the lake, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, and you've yeah, got yeah, and, no. and you've got the cover under your side, so you better put ten under your seat. And being American, this is all in pounds, by the way. Okay, and under my seat, yeah, I've probably got at least say five. Mind you've got food with me, you've got so the oil and then you've got the oil. Yeah, oh blime, I'm gonna have to say ten under my seat. Okie dokie. And yes, we have got the doors on and the dual controls are in, otherwise I'm not getting in it. All right, so eight dollars an hour. That don't I won't change anything. And oh dear. Mm. This is not looking good for full fuel mm. poop. You you skipped over it, but I know you you just want to focus on that. Uh huh. You, have you programmed this to change the pressure altitude? No, temperature? no, because okay. yeah, because of course that doesn't actually impact on anything to do with the weight, does it? This, no, no, but the performance and the theoretically maybe this was this well. was this was just me merely to for when you do your um, hovering ground effect, nose ground effect. It just skips. It just helps uh, with um, working out density altitude. If I said that we were potentially going to fly at um, 2000. No, no, Daddy. No, no, sweetheart. I can't see you because we've minimised you on the screen. Hang on. You still there? No. There he is. Nice, Bastion. See you in the morning. Yeah, it's tired. Okay. I'm just going to have to minimise everybody again. Um and it is uh ah, it's just there we are. Yeah, 
That's all it is. Interesting. Yeah, it's just all the stuff I'll leave it on there. All right, boss. Uh, Gill, then, what did we say? So we said uh, 16. Oh, 22, wasn't it? 16 to use. Three is the minimum. That's 19. We should ideally take another half hour, so another four in there. So 23 Three, gallons of yeah. fuel. 23. Oh, I'm still already telling you, can't I? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Mm. 22.8. Let's just, uh, let's just yeah. keep changing the number until we get something that, that works. <laughs> I didn't realize until recently it actually tells you, doesn't it, the allowance. Yeah. So you can have 22.8. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, okay. mind, you're going to burn one on start. Mm. So you can see we can't quite take exactly what we wanted to. However, yes, if we're trying to if we're trying to get every every scrap of fuel in that aircraft, we can start off with more fuel, but we can't get off the ground until down there, 22.8. Mm. So we might think, right, well, it's going to take a gallon of fuel just to get it up and running, isn't it? Yeah. So actually, we could do 23.8. So it could start with 24, but we must make sure we don't attempt to lift until we're down to 22.8. Good luck with calculating that on the gauge, but anyway. So we're, we're going to be good because it doesn't look good, otherwise a load of red on the screen. We'll say, right, well, therefore, I don't know if it let me do a point actually. Never tried. Uh, yeah, it does. There we are. Ta da! 22.8, and we get off the ground. Phew. And the line does suggest that throughout that flight, as we get lighter, we stay within the, the balance of the aircraft. And we certainly don't reach a minimum weight of the aircraft. And laterally, left and right, yeah, we're within. I don't want to go too mad on this form, but you get the general gist, don't you? So actually, fuel wise, looks like we're okay. But quickly thinking them up, but was that enough to get there and get back out and get to Wellsbourne and to refuel? No. It's cutting it fine, wasn't it? Mm, you could do it, but certainly with no more diversion. Yeah. Mm. So we'd need to be quiet. There. So we'd start, we, you'd be so part of the brief and be right, Ross. We want to fly as accurately, okay? We want to fly at the most fuel efficient speed of that aircraft, which is, can you remember what it is? Anybody? Efficient the most speed. fuel efficient, so the best miles per gallon speed of an R22 is. So it's, it's not because um, the because <laughs> I don't want to get it. <laughs> <laughs> don't get confused with endurance. Exactly. So eight, 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 time, it's, yeah, 83 because, knots, yeah. which I've more or less put in there. I did 85, so it's going to be that damn close. But that's what we'd want to be thinking, isn't mm. it? Um, so 83 knots, and we can eat everything out of that aircraft. And don't fly with the carving fully out the whole time unless we really need it to, because that will impact very slightly on it. Fly in balance, clean the rotors, clean the screen, make, polish it nicely so it slips through the air. Yeah. See, all those sorts of lovely things. And don't take too much. So we might have to ditch some of the baggage. We don't, have, we don't need the screen cover, because I was waiting for somebody to say, you know, can we get a jet right? We don't need the screen cover. You could fly a little bit lower in the headwind as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll drop that lower. down. That buys us a bit more fuel. 23.7. This is looking good. We're just sneaking a bit more, aren't we? Fuel in there. Because the screen cover is potent. If, if, if we said it was five pounds, that's nearly that's that's nearly um a uh, gallon of fuel, isn't it? You can huddle for warmth as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a lake, share a coat. Now, the other thing is the 44 is coming with us, it's only got two people in it. So we can say, tell you what. You can take some of our stuff, but we'll, I'll still take my coat and sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> they can take the spare oils, etc. Anyway, so you could maybe trim some of that a little bit, etc. We get the idea now, yeah. But yes, you would have to um, stick to your times. Yes, very much. So. Yeah, and not deviate. Yeah. So therefore, when we go back, we would want to put maybe times and therefore fuel amounts on the chart to say, right, at this point we should have at least this much fuel to make this all work. So if we've got more than that, that's great. But if we've got less than that, we're now already thinking, okay, well, we're now saying we might not have enough fuel to go there and come back out and go into our place to refuel. So we are now thinking about the stop for refuel on the way. Mm -hmm. We'll just have to take a hit on the time. It's fuel. So I was just showing yeah. that's a fuel circle. Um, everybody okay with the weight and balance? Because I'm, I'm just going to drop the that the screen now. Yeah, I guess so. Right. This when you I'll stop you sharing that one for a minute. So I put YU's on that leg, and what should still be in the tank? 
I so yeah, I can't. I'm not going to mark it on the screen at the moment, but they're doing it on the chart. So they're now they're now working out for for each kind of maybe turning point or significant points along the way, how much fuel we really ought to have at that point, and no and no less than that to make this all work. Hence, as I said, if you've got more fuel, that's not a problem. But if you've got less fuel, we need to we're going to have to stop somewhere, aren't we? Because it's going to become unsafe. But we can keep monitoring that as the flight goes, and the closer we get to the destination. We'll definitely tell, but we've got to have work out where's the cutoff point. Well, Welsh Pool, like I say, is a nice, easy one. They've said they're open, they're expecting us, et cetera, et cetera. So that works out quite nicely. So we could have a point just to come to Welsh Pool, right, Ross, we need to still have at least, let's just say 10 gallons, for instance, yeah. at that point. Otherwise, we're going in for fuel. Happy with that? Yes. Good. Um, if we've got more than enough fuel, so if it's in the 44 or the Cadbury, it's not quite so critical. We'd still monitor fuel burn in the flight, but we wouldn't have to necessarily mark it on the chart because you've got more than enough. Cracking, it's got enough to actually fly all the way back to Elstree if you want it. So we can be far more relaxed about it. But we're playing with the 22 and we, you know, we're cutting it a little bit on the finer line, aren't we? It, yeah, because it wouldn't matter if you, you drop five knots in the 44. No, exactly. Yeah, that's it. But we'd also wouldn't want to be chivied along, let's fly a bit faster because it burns more fuel now. Mm. So we want to stick to our guns and fly, you know, pretty much that, let's just say that 85 knots or 83 knots if you really want to do it. Good. Okay, so that's all working out quite nicely. Um, so what's going to come next then? What's next? Come on, someone online. Yeah, come on, you onliners. Help me out. Paul's picking on me. So what else should we um, look at? Have you got a look at, um, because you're going up into some high terrain there, yep. the, your, your performance for your landing and your approach? Yes, good. So we'd now need to look at, um, if we if we now know the elevation of the site, and how are we going to find out the elevation of the, the site of Lake Verney? Yeah, yeah, it is actually quite handy because on here, there are many other ways of doing it. Google Earth, you can search it and all those sorts of things. But yeah, if I actually zoom in for a minute and just hover on there. Oops. It says it down the bottom left, but it should say there are 1,247 feet above sea level. We would need to know the, the the typical temperature and pressure of the day as well, of course. But let's just say it's just just ISA for a minute. Then we then have a look on that on the on the chart within the POH. Two in there. There's hovering ground effect and hover out of ground effect. Which one are we going to use? Out. Okay. Why is that? Because it's more demanding. It is. So that's one way of being safe. Yeah. yeah. We could see has it got hover out of ground effect performance. Because if it's got hover out of ground effect, it's definitely got hovering ground effect, assuming it's all running okay, obviously. All that sort of it's good. So I'm glad you've done it that way around. Mm. And um, and now bearing in mind how kind of we're not going to be low on fuel, but we're going to be quite light, actually. You know, we're going to be right down to maybe only 10 gallons of fuel, just an example, kind of thing, or less than this, a smidgen less than that. So yeah, and we would now look at our weight and balance to work out exactly how heavy the helicopter is. We'd then look at those performance charts and we can see that yeah it actually yeah it should have hover out ground effect that's good news for us because when we look at the site we are suddenly going to realize yeah it's definitely going to need a fair bit of performance to get in there and we still got to think about getting out as well mm. obviously we haven't we still haven't discussed the um the, the route back etc how do we determine hover out of ground effect performance uh, you you look at the weight of the helicopter, Jonathan. So we'd work out how much fuel we're going to have when we get there. We need to look at the temperature there and, and the pressure, therefore the density of the day and that elevation. And within the POH, there's two charts: hovering ground effect and hover out of ground effect. Mm. And you would use, you'd look across there and you'd work out what you can actually achieve. And let's just say it might say, for instance, we can achieve hover out of ground effect at uh, two thousand feet. And therefore, we've got a little surplus there of 700 odd feet, haven't we? So all being well, it should have hover out of ground effect. I think James is going to go and try and um, find one just to sort of flag up. the manifold pressures of the day that you worked out before you took off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, those sorts of things. Yeah, absolutely. So all being well, we've got a little bit of margin in there. Okay. 
So yeah, the probably somewhere along the lines, we've still got some of the major things is we need to look and see if we can actually even land there, don't we? Mm. Um, does that fall within flight performance and planning? Yeah, absolutely. It's something we need to look at before we go. Um, but might fall as far as questions are concerned within the operational procedures exam, possibly in the human force limitation exam, you get questions about maybe confined area because it's then all about the pressure of landing there, as in the mental pressure, the psychological pressure. And then operational procedures would be, ah, it'd be about looking at these performance charts as to whether theoretically it can even achieve this or not. So that's definitely one of the next steps. And um, I'm, I'm actually going to need a quick, unusual for me is because I drank my cup. Let me to the bar for a second. Have a quick think about anything else we need to consider. So I'm just whipping out there is, performance um, charts for us to see here. There is, there's, there's one big glaring one, which we might have just barely mentioned, but something we really should look at. And then there's another one, which we have semi said, but I don't think anybody's picked up on it yet. That's going to be a bit mm. of a possible problem. Right, so here's the section five performance of the R22 DOH. So you've got in-ground hover ceiling versus gross weight, and you've got out-of-ground effect mm -hmm. hover ceiling versus gross weight. And of course, they've got the different versions. And of course, we use the beta two. In ground effect, ground effect, out of ground effect. But which model is this for? This is R22 standard, R22 HP and alpha. I think HP used to stand for high power, which is a bit of a joke. Um, R22 beta <laughs> 2. There you go. So right. here's your, no one else can see this. So this is riveting for everyone else. Um, Pressure altitude. You're welcome to open your POHs, your R22 POHs. <laughs> To 510, we'll see the graph that I'm currently showing Ralph. So here you go. You've got your gross weight in kilos, you've got your gross weight in pounds, and you can you can compare it to pressure altitude, resolve it to density altitude, and that'll basically tell you can you offer it or not. So a quick look at that. The pressure altitude it goes up really, really high, yeah. now, doesn't it? So, what they're saying essentially is let's it's say, there, isn't it? it's, it's that. let's say we've got a gross weight of 1300 pounds, yeah. okay, and an outside air temperature of 10 degrees where we're going to, and theoretically, we can hover that. My understanding of this out of ground effect at like 8,000 mm. feet, fresh altitude. Mm. Or you can look at it the other way. You can look at your pressure altitude first, resolve it with the temperature, and then look down and see at the highest gross weight that you can hover. So you see you're comparing I think, one I think if you look on that, on the screen at the moment, the weight and balance says that you're taking off at 1,442 pounds. So you just we need because to know what we're going to land at because at the moment 1400s off the out of ground effect chart isn't it on the right yeah but that's for i mean you can't even you can't even use 1400 in the r22 because he's got the cavalry selected at the moment which of course can be heavier but yes you're right you need to figure out what weight you're going to arrive at or you can take it the other way you can figure out what the pressure altitude and then the temperature is and then you can reduce that down to the weight that you can have and still have out of ground effect hover performance. So you can take it either way. You can go via your weight up to temperature, figure out the pressure altitude you can have, or figure out the pressure altitude density and figure out the weight you can have. You can use one to resolve the other axes. Yes. That makes sense. I agree with you. Thank you. <laughs> I've just I've just put a link on the chat of the R22 that tried to do exactly what we're planning now and didn't get it quite right. Yep. Yeah. yeah I nearly bought a, that one. That's a that's a funny story that involved. Are you, are you, is that what you're talking about next? Is the, yeah, there's a few things potential... in the cover. I'm going to run out of time, so I'm just trying to decide which do. I'm going to leave the, the examining the site in just for a moment because it's a confined area sort of discussion. Yeah. We might might make a separate ground score entirely on confined areas because it's quite a big topic mm -hmm. and a really interesting one of 
how we get in and out of places. So we'll just come back to that second. Right. So the 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 two the two biggie things that I was that we kind of haven't really mentioned or looked at properly are no terms. Mm. Well, we've, we've mentioned it. We yeah, sort of just detail. yeah, that's right. We just sort of loosely mentioned it, but we really do need to check if there are any no terms that are affecting us. And of course, you should now go to the Nats website and create this route on the uh, Nats website and, yeah, yeah. and read them all off. That's, <laughs> however, there are many applications that can also kind of Prove assist, service. assist with that. And we'll just use this one for a moment just to see if it did flag anything up. And we can see them over here. So again, I'm just going to double check. Um, I can change the helicopter. but It's not going to make any difference, to be quite honest, because I'm not using the weight and balance of the aircraft on Skyden. So it matters not. All that really matters in here is the fact that what I'm saying, and I've just blanketed the route for the minute, 2100, what I'm going to fly at speed-wise and when we're going, and it will work out all these things. And it really won't matter if it's an R22 or 44 down there. It's irrelevant. So I know I've got a different helicopter selected right now. Um, about the no terms, and we can see there's some Elstree here about taxiways being closed. And I'm not going to scroll for every single one, but one way or another, we need to check that there aren't any no terms that are going to affect the, the route, aren't they? Of course, which is why it's really important amongst other things, to make sure you put the right date and time in there. But it's only going to check, really, it's not going to check the whole of tomorrow, because I've not asked it to do that. I've asked it to check that the time we're departing and for the length of time we're flying. So it won't necessarily flag up a no term that's going to pop up tomorrow afternoon on the way back. Fallen foul of that before, as such. Got to watch out. Um, OK, so... Let's just pretend I didn't spot any on the chart. The whiz, we whizzed through all these lovely no terms, including don't fly over the Ukraine at the moment because you might get shot down. Um, that there doesn't appear to be anything that affects us, okay? So I guess we'd better start thinking about the route back, hadn't we? And I'll tell you, we'll just take the same route back, make life easy. So I'm just going to reverse the route, change the time, and we're going to come back at, say, we're going to depart there at four o'clock. So 1500 UTC. Yeah, no problem. Job done. Or is it? There's some. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you've got to go back through the no tans, making sure there's nothing in there that's going to affect us. You can see how it's now reversed around landing at Elstree, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, yes, we need to check the weather. Let's just say the weather looks good all day long. It doesn't appear now to be any no terms. So we've 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 covered that base. I know I'm skipping through this, but because I'm rapidly running out of time, but you get the idea. Don't forget to check the route back. But it's something we've overlooked. What are these uh, little blue lines? That's wind direction. And what direction are they pointing from and to? Oh, it's going to take longer. Yes. Look, look at the top right hand corner. One hour and 42. Now, if we were scraping the barrel getting up there, we are definitely going to need fuel on the way back. Now, yeah, I know. We said we're going to stop off at Wellspool to get fuel. Like that, for instance. Any ratio, right? Yeah, it's only trimmed it by 11 minutes. So it's close. But you can imagine if the wind was stronger. Now, the forecast of the wind is very, very light, isn't it? But you can imagine if that wind, 8.9 knots just for there, for instance, if that was a 20 knot wind, there's no way we're probably going to get back. We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to. We're going to have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to do another refuel, aren't we? So please don't forget to plan the way back. We well, obviously we need to make sure we get back before sunset. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, sunset's like quarter past eight, isn't it? And, and, and half hour after sunset. So we're, we're, we're good on time. I mean, I definitely want to be back by then, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but you can just see how that would possibly cause a problem. I say if that wind was stronger, this would be a problem, wouldn't it? And we really would have to consider refueling or it would be very tight. So we'd go through that whole process again. Well, we're going to go to Wellsport. We're going to fill up with as much fuel as we possibly can, 24 gallons, et cetera, et cetera. And off we go. And we would then monitor that fuel, uh, making sure that as we go past various places, especially as we get towards the end, so to Western would be a very easy fuel stop. So let's work out how much we should have there to make it back home. Otherwise, otherwise we stop. Yeah. We're nipping in for fuel. But are they open? So therefore, we've got to call them, check their open. Look, we're planning on doing this tomorrow. Might have to stop on the way back for fuel. 
They said, oh, yeah, what sort of time? Oh, about six o'clock. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, we might not be here. Oh, God, so we're now modifying the... Yeah, so there's all those things to go through, isn't there? So that we don't end up getting stuck somewhere. I don't want to get stuck. I don't have to abandon the helicopter in a field somewhere. And actually, you know, we got on the way back, we got to Western, which is a very easy fuel stop. And um, uh, Holton, never actually found it to Holton. But I don't like it. No, I was going to say, I bet they're not overly keen. Um, and you ha there is Wickham over there, but I mean, yeah, if you can make Wickham a chance, you, you can probably make Elstree. So you can see that to a degree, to Western's possibly one of our last sort of easy fuel stops. So we'd, I would definitely work out that fuel at that point if we're going to have enough to safely get back okay. And if we haven't, well, we could trim that route very slightly and just cut through, but it wouldn't buy us an awful lot of time. So one hour 43, I just want you to see that Oxford if I just remove that turning point, it's trimmed it by two minutes. That's all it's bought. And you probably have to, in all that, that stress figure out holding time, maybe. If yeah, a a and, and then suddenly that's right. Suddenly they can't do you're going to have to hold and bam, it's blown it out of the water. So although they look like that's going to really save time, actually that just trimmed it by two minutes. And that's cutting it a bit too fine. If we thought that was, you know, yes, yeah, yeah, that's that's cutting it really fine, isn't it? If that's what we're right down to. Um, well, yeah. Luckily, that bit is very close to another corridor, so it shouldn't gain anything. Okay, and I say I'll. Um, I'm going to stop it there because I want to. Um, I'm going to leave confined area as a whole as a whole um, ground school. I think which would be a really cool one to go through. So we can really spend some time looking at a site. Maybe we'll go back to Lake Vernon and have a look at about landing there, and then we can look at those performance charts, etc. So anybody got any questions or anything we've sort of looked at and discussed tonight? Yeah, Paul, I think it's important that that last when you just talked about the fuel and possibly using to Western that I think that emphasizes why even though the CA are now pushing a lot towards using GPS, basically because it's stopping airspace infringements, having yeah. things like your fuel circles drawn on a chart as yeah. well. Yeah, mean, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, if you've got if you've got a surplus, if you can, if you're in an aircraft that's got surplus fuel, it's not too much of a worry. But you still want to think about is don't you that 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 point of of not no return, but where you you if you go past this point, and you've got less fuel. It's going to be a problem. You're going to end up in a field somewhere stuck for fuel, or worse still, you'll try and push your luck and push on and run out of fuel in the air, which is obviously very undesirable. So yeah, we mustn't be too heavily reliant upon all these automated uh, systems that assist us, etc. We've still got to have a good understanding of, of the basics behind it so that we can make the judgment call rather than letting a, a program make the judgment for us. Is it easy to write like um, your frequencies on your kneeboard or on the chart as, as you... Uh, so, so Ross, I don't know if you can hear what Ross has just said. I was always taught to kind of double up the information because if one source of information gets obscured, like a detail that you've written in the chart is rubbed off, you want it on your leg. Mm -hmm. And if somehow you manage to uh, get a, well, your map goes out the window. The map, your map goes out the window. Yeah, no, it's, it's not good. Your, your knee ball goes out the window. Um, if, uh, the, the, you know, it's, you go for a little bit of rain, the door leaks and drips onto your knee board and makes your pen all suddenly blur and smudge and you can't read what it says. Where else have we got that information? So ideally, you should double up a, a lot on the information. Hence, have it on your knee board and have, without cluttering your chart, maybe have a, a, a reasonable amount on your chart, things that are going to be important to mm -hmm. you. And that way you've got two lots of information to be on the safe side. Good. good, good, good. Um, I just need to remind everybody uh, that the next ground score, so to, not next week, but in two weeks' time, We've got uh, another one of our wonderful um, radio telephony, our RT uh, masterclasses, and Amanda Rhodes, who does um, uh, Luton BFR traffic and all rest of it. She's joining us, as she has done before, which would be amazing, and to talk to you and answer lots of questions that you have. So don't forget about that one. That's in two weeks' time. Yes, two weeks' time. Yay! RT. RT, you got it. Let's put that in my book. I'll put that in here. Okay, well, look, thanks everybody for joining us. I hope you've got something from.
it's always it's one of my favorites going through i love flight performance and planning especially when we actually start to plan routes etc except for the real exciting bit and realizing what we can do and and uh, working out the route you want to take and for different reasons rather than just purely a straight line yeah as well uh -huh. Yeah, there is. But that that the more you play around with this, which again is why something like a Sky Demon is really good, because you can just muck around with it very quickly, alter roots and, and play with it and start to get a good feel, because you suddenly start to get a bit of a feel. You can we can just, you know, James is the same. He'll and, and Peter now has got lots of experience. You can almost look at a chart and almost kind of work out roughly where you can go straight away without refueling because of the way configuration. Even though we haven't calculated it yet, we've just got a bit of a feel for it, which to have to do the calculations. But we might think, yeah, we're in this helicopter and we've got a fairly light person. It's only the two of us, tailwind, headwinds, blah, blah, blah. And you already get a bit of a feel. So it does make the process a little easier yeah. rather than doing it completely blind and raw and having to go through it step by step. But you do that kind of, you do look at that kind of just overview first. Oh, you will sort of maybe go around this way because you want to end up here. Then you start looking a bit more at the detail, working it all out. It's an interesting insight to put a range ring on the channel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, that's a very interesting exercise for somebody who wanted to grow yeah. that ability in themselves. Yeah, that is, James was just saying about a range ring. Well, I've, I've done that before just simply because the weather's not yeah. very nice where we want to go and you can start to look roll roughly. This is it. This is the circle. This is how roughly how far you can get. Yeah. Don't forget, though, watch out the head yeah, the tail the wings. Details. Yes. So don't go right on the edge of the, the ring. The tail wing will ca carry you right away over here, but you're still going to get back, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. To think about that but that's all right we've got fuel stops but have got the time for the fuel is it open and you suddenly get through that whole process again don't you and look at it all cool brilliant no worries well have a have a lovely evening everybody and we'll see you all in a couple of weeks time yes thanks, thanks, thanks very much thank everyone you. thank you cheers, cheers. Right. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da.